So you are military and you're moving to Colorado Springs and you're wondering what kind of home can I get for my money? What are the neighborhoods like? Are they safe for my kids? What's the drive time like to Carson, Shriver, Peterson Air Force Base? The whole goal of this video is to discuss some of the suburbs, the most popular places that people are choosing to move to and the most popular neighborhoods that are the closest to military bases and some of the pitfalls to avoid if you're going the new construction route. And I'm gonna teach you guys where you can find a perfect spot to live when you're moving to Colorado Springs, as well as what it's like to actually live in these areas. And then you can just make up your own mind. So this time we are at the Glen and we are going to be looking at a home by Windsor Ridge called the Chesapeake. This is actually what Windsor Ridge is known for, this particular model. So the homes in here are bigger. People typically are uh, make a little bit more money in this particular neck of the woods. You're going to start seeing three and four plus car garages. There's a house I sold in here about a year ago, there was a six car garage built by the same builder, Windsor Ridge. All right, so as I walk up, they got these little cheesy like flags right here to indicate that the house is for sale. <laughs> Landscaping still needs to be installed. It's winter time, so they're not doing that quite yet, not until the springtime tall verticality. I mean, that's 20 plus feet right there. And then you've got that door that's nice and boom, boom, boom. Look at that. Open it up. One of the first things I noticed in the Chesapeake model is the wrought iron staircase. It's a two tiered staircase as well as it has kind of like a Juliet balcony as well. There's so much more verticality with this model. I mean, this is, 20 plus feet ceilings right there. Okay, so as you come on in here, this is the kitchen area. And the kitchen area has, first off, we'll start with the pantry. I wish that they would have gotten this pantry a little bit bigger. It's not huge, it's kind of small um, for this size home. But um, I do like the fact that it's over in kind of the corner of the kitchen. So you have, this would basically be the refrigerator right here. They haven't put the appliances in the home yet. Um, you have a kind of like a wine um, or, you know, just like a, a hutch, something that you can put like your nice dishware, what have you, your wine. Um, granite countertops, you've got uh, again, 42 inch height cabinetry. And this time they put crown molding on the top of this cabinetry. What they also did is they put a glass backsplash um, all the way through. So this is a little bit of an upgrade. Um, they also have kind of the uh, different style of door right here. This is kind of different from the ones we've been looking at. This is like um, a farm print, has kind of a rounded arch right here and it has some more bevels and details in there. You have the vent hood coming down right here. You have the gas, uh, actually this is not gas, this is electric, you have the electric range right here. And then you have the dishwasher right here. So this island right here is kind of like an independent island. Although to me, it reminds me more of like a peninsula island, just because it's attached to some drywall right here. And it kind of juts out and then it has kind of a little bit of an extra section right here. Good size, definitely undermount sink. It's got the Lazy Susan that everyone's a fan of. So put all your spices, spice racks, all that kind of stuff goes all the way around and then closes. So people like that. Dining area. Again, depending on your taste, this has a little bit more traditional look as far as the the trims, the hardware on this house. 
good open size living area with fireplace. Oh, it's fancy. And they've got, they've got um, some really nice uh, accent lighting right there. So this house is wired for surround sound. So all those boxes, the um, outlets are pre-wired. So this is definitely designed to be like an entertainer's living room, I would say, just because it has the fireplace wrapped in stacked stone, has a nice traditional um, mantle, electrical mounted above the fireplace, so flush TV. And like I said, it's got four boxes that are nice symmetry too. That's another thing. Sometimes you see these houses where it'll have like this cavity in here, and then over here it'll just be like flat. So then in your eyes, your, your mind, you're just like, it doesn't, it doesn't have any cohesion. So I think it looks really nice to have everything be uniform. This house does have a basement. We're gonna get to the basement in a second, but let's go ahead and go upstairs. And as I'm going upstairs, you can kind of catch some of the verticality. Definitely as you come up here, you have like this catwalk area. You can look down to, um, you know, any guests or friends that are coming over. It also has this really cool accent window with, with that arch. So you can see out to the street really well. Let's go ahead and go into primary bedroom. It has a, you know, two French doors. This is a good size room here, really good size room. Has um, a trade ceiling. And one of the things I forgot to talk to you guys about is bullnose corners. So this house actually has bullnose corners. So see how this is rounded? Why don't you go ahead and just zoom in a little bit. This is rounded. So the entire house, let's go point up there to the tray. See how it's curved? Mark, that's, I don't really care. Well, maybe not, but it's just a definitely a different type of look than the straight edge. They're still doing the bull nose rounded corners. Now, if you've never seen this before, then maybe I'm blowing your mind. I remember the first time I saw this, I thought this was the most amazing thing ever. This was like probably 15 years ago when I first saw this and thought every edge is curved. Isn't that high tech? That's really amazing. This is kind of, in my opinion, showing that it's a little bit, even though this is a new house, to me, it seems like it's a little bit old school. At least in Colorado, I'm not sure about other parts of the country. Le um, let me know in the comments below if you've seen this before if every single house in your neighborhood has this curved corner. Uh, if it does, let me know because I'd be curious enough this is still in style. I think it's, they're kind of phasing out of it. They're going back to straight edge. I'm gonna have like graphics where you'll see the pricing and stuff like that, um, which I'm working on this graphic that's really cool. It literally is like a 3D and then the drone flies over it and it's like sit, anyway. It'll be dope, you'll see that. Watch, I'll probably click here and it'll, it'll, it'll be there. Um, this house here, does back up to essentially open space. So I've told you guys in video, I'm gonna continue to repeat myself is forever because look at that. How brown is that? That is what Colorado Springs in really most of Colorado looks like the majority of the time. It's brown. It's like a beige, tan, brown color especially when you're in new construction because you got the dirt and everything. Um, it's kind of looks like the lunar surface, but it's brown here the majority of the time. Does get green in the uh, spring and summer for a few months, maybe four months total. Okay, so we come in here. We have a nice five piece bath. So this time, oh, look at this, check this out. So we have a, um, a skylight above us. So that's pretty cool. We also have his and hers um, sinks. This time the, uh, uh, the reveal is like a square. And I like this look, this is what I have in my bathroom, something similar to this. I don't like the round. So we chose, hey, we wanna cut that quartz like a square. And I think that looks really sharp, more modern. Um, got this little trim piece right here, kind of like, I guess like a bathroom's like backsplash is what it would be. Um, I mean, this isn't winning any awards. This is kind of old school. It just depends on your, your, um, your taste. Let's see, these are soft clothes. Kind of seem like they could be. Nope. It's just a little bit, like it just sticks a little bit, but 
not soft clothes. I would have liked to have seen soft clothes in here. Okay, now the one thing that this does have is a nice soaking tub trimmed out with a nice uh, nickel plated edge. And we have 12 by, um, 12 by 24 straight lay tile. So straight lay tile all throughout. I think that matches really good. And I like how they take it from the floor and they connect it up to the soaking tub. What they also did is they continued it in this stand up shower, which I think again is really nice. It is a straight lay tile. Okay, got the soap dishes right there. And then if you pound at the bottom, it has like a uh, river stone or a pebble uh, surface. So corny and cheesy, but having like something on your feet that's like stone or tile, it's the best feeling ever. Instead of having plastic, think about when you rented your first apartment, probably didn't have river stone <laughs> on the bottom, right? Didn't it have like the plastic crap, the, the plastic uh, form, you know, the whole thing is just like one big plastic modular form that you can just tear out and replace it. That's what's been on your feet for like the last, you know, however many years you've been renting. So then when you finally buy a house, the surfaces are better because when you're spending $600,000 for a house, you want to feel like, you know, okay, this is, we're not, this is a uh, heavy duty now, you know? So <laughs> trying to joke around and entertain you guys too a little bit. If I'm being annoying, just put a note in the comment, like, dude, just stop talking. Just film the house. And I'll just, I won't, I won't say anything else. I'll just film the house. That's, that's even, that's easier for me. Um, now in here. Okay. So watch this. So then here, look at this, look at this. This is not, in my opinion, they could have done a better job with this. Okay. I know it sounds weird, but this is considered an upgrade because yeah, this is an upgrade. This is like a, a big deal. This is what they would consider built-ins. Instead of having the wired frames for your shelves, you have a caddy for your, 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 your boxers, your socks, your ties, your, you know, colognes, your perfumes, whatever you want to put in here, you have that. You have these, these um, built-ins. This is kind of like considered fancy. Like this is like an upgrade. Even though you could go, if you really wanted to, you could go to like California closet and really map out like the ultimate closet. They've gone a step up from the entry level wire framing to have this stuff, which holds more weight. It's definitely more stout. Um, and it ha is painted as well to match the color of the closet. So this is what you're getting as far as considered an upgrade. So this is again, a five, a, a, Definitely a five piece primary bathroom, okay? We've got bedroom number two, which is gonna follow me around. We're just gonna do a nice little roundabout. Good little size room. I mean, it's not huge. It's maybe, you know, 10 by 12, something like that, okay? Got a linen closet right here. So you can use your linen closet for um, your bathroom. So here's another bathroom uh, with the same matching granite. Tell me in the comments below if you guys like this style of granite, because um, I don't know, I'm not a big fan of it, honestly. I don't necessarily like this really speckled stuff. I like more of like a straighter color, maybe. And so and then we also have, if you wanna come in here and just look, We've got um, the same 12 by 24 straight lay tile, gray slate up to the ceiling. So I like that they matched it. They matched it um, in all of the bathrooms, basically. I would assume that it's gonna be in all the bathrooms. Okay, so bedroom number three. And you look out over the front eaves of your house, the front neighborhood pitch of your house. You got another walk-in closet. Okay, but wait, there's more. Look over here. We have a little extra little cove. This is gonna throw you off. You thought I was playing. Look, look down here. Look at that. Okay, let's let them let just kind of soak that in. You're good right there. 
Look at that. This is cool. Normally there'd be drywall right here and you would never even see this, but I like how this builder did this. This is really cool because it gives you line of sight. I can look all the way through into that room. I can look all the way through into that room's window. I can look down to the dining area. So if your guest just arrived or someone just showed up, you can say, you know, doorbell rings, come on in, you know, and they walk in. Hey, I'm right up here. I'll be right down. I'll be down in a second. So that, that's, that's nice, right? Like this could have been closed, but look, then they, they had to put this cap right here. This is like a windowsill. It's a windowsill. It's just a, um, used as a cap right here. So they have this nice, cap right here. So I, I think I give them an A plus for the thought that they put into just cutting this out and making it nice because it really does add some dimension to the house. The next, see the window right here, you can look out. Perfect. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Very good. And again, a little bit more ornate detail. Okay. Now, let, come with me. I'm gonna show you, point something out. Look at the ceiling here. We have every light on in this house and it's not nighttime. I mean, it's daytime. They decided to paint the ceilings the same modern gray as all the walls. Ceilings, in my opinion, should always be white because um, then it makes the eye kind of travel upwards and it makes the house feel bigger because this house has a lot of verticality, but it kind of doesn't really feel that way. It's sort of dark through here. So overall, this is a pretty okay house. Um, I think it's um, cool for somebody. In my opinion, it's a little bit old, old school. This is a little bit um, of an old school house to me, you know, cause look at like this right here. See that bump out, that little trim piece right there. Look at that is bull nose as well. Now, where you're from, if you've never seen this, you're probably gonna lose your mind and be like, this is amazing, and that's great. Everyone has different tastes and stuff. Some people don't like modern stuff. They like more of a traditional um, style home, and so I think that's what this offers. Even the, the facade of the house itself has a little bit of a, um, I don't know if it's modern or traditional. It's kind of a little bit of both, I think. Um, but now that I've seen so many homes with this bullnose corner, here it is again. I think it's, to me, a little bit, um, it dates the home a little bit. What do you think? Leave a, leave a comment below. Let me know if you're getting a good value out of these videos or not. I'm gonna do a ton of these um, because I've been getting a lot of people commenting saying that they really, really like the walkthrough tours. It's one thing to see something on a map. It's another to see some pictures on Zillow or some website, but it's a whole different thing to actually see them in person, plus get you know a realtor to narrate and talk about all the details of the house. It just gives a different dimension, so. You guys love it when I do these map tours, and I've gotten a ton of new subscribers here in the past few months. So obviously, we're gonna start with kind of the downtown Colorado Springs area, and then the most popular places that people are choosing to move to. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. The very first community that we are going to look at, and I'm just going to draw like a border, but right in here, this is the Glen. And the Glen is kind of like, I would say maybe like the fancier big brother to Lorson Ranch. This is gonna be like 500, and up as far as pricing. So 500 and up in here. Again, you can find opportunity. Now there's pre-existing houses all throughout here. Like this doesn't look like a lot. Like this little area right here doesn't look like much, but this is huge. There's thousands of homes in here. Okay. And they were all built, you know, from uh, the the 90s all the way into the uh, early 2000s and, you know, 2000 teens, right? 14, 15, 16 in there. And now here's a newer section being built in here. So this, this newer section right here is some opportunities. And again, one of the things I like about the Glen is you are closer to Mesa Ridge Parkway. You're just literally get on Mesa Ridge Parkway and you're there depending on the traffic how people are driving and the weather as well so being closer 
in basically closer to Carson. Um, I think that is something that uh, <clears throat> might be a good thing as well. I don't know if it's worth an extra $50,000 or whatever, but- like More information about this home or any of the homes that they got going on. We're gonna go tour another home that's by Windsor Ridge as well to give you sort of an idea of the variance. And uh, let me know what you think. Hit me up, send me a text, shoot, shoot me an email, schedule a Zoom call with myself or team member, and we can actually go through a map tour of everything in Colorado Springs. So we can show you exactly, drill down on the map, show you exactly where these homes are located, what the inventory levels look like, what they're trading for, what kind of incentives they're offering, what kind of time frame on the build it's gonna take, all that stuff. And then literally, if you move into Colorado Springs and you fly in, you could have a home being finished up and ready for delivery on the time that you actually move to Colorado Springs. So with that being said, Mark Davis, I'll see you on the next one. So this time we're in front of another Windsor Ridge model. This is a ranch style house that I have in the background here. And this house right here, it's finished, it's move in ready. So let's go ahead and walk into this house so you can see for yourself what you're getting. This is a four bedroom, three bath, 3,327 square foot home. Okay, cool. So we're entering into the ranch style model house for Windsor Ridge homes. So as you walk in, you notice that it has a, definitely a tall ceiling right here, but let's go ahead and take a look at the very first thing you notice is the bathroom, but then also let's come in here. You have nice tall doors in this model. So this would basically be considered maybe the office or a bedroom on the main level overlooking the covered patio and the front yard, okay? Also, these doors are really tall. That's one thing I like about this house. I really like this bathroom, the um, stand-up tub and shower combo. I like the tile that's there. It's got a, like a 12 by 24 straight laid tile. It's come through here. Got some nice ornate details with the caps on the um, railing, stack stone fireplace, and nice traditional mantle. Definitely verticality, a lot of vertical space in this house. This is one of the things I like about ranch style houses, even though they're not as, in my opinion, impressive from the street, they're kind of small and squatty from just driving by. When you come into a ranch style home, they're, they feel huge, they're really awesome. Um, Dining area. You've got two, actually we'll save the outside for last. You've got a double oven. I like this, uh, this trim right here, look at this. I like the way that this, this looks, these handles. This is a nice Samsung brand. So you got the oven right here, all the controls. These controls look better than my double oven. My double oven, you gotta push buttons a bunch of times for the turn on. It's, it's, uh, it's like GE. This is, um, I like this. I mean, I've never used the double oven. I just use the microwave. <laughs> um, okay, crown moldings, burlap color countertops, double oven. You've got, look at this. You put your wine, your cigars, whatever you're needing to put in there, you put in there. My kids would just be bottled waters or their juice boxes or whatever. Um, okay, gas range. Samsung, again. Subway tile, very nice. This time it's staggered. That's to be implied when you're talking about um, Subway. Two really cool accent um, windows underneath the, counter, the cabinets. And then we have more cabinets all throughout. This is almost like a cityscape staggered cabinet setup. We have the pantry area right here. It's not super deep, but you've got so many cabinets. I mean, you just put stuff in the cabinets. Um, all the appliances are in this particular model. I mean, you've, got, you've even got really nice um, under the stove cabinetry in drawers, plenty of stuff. There's all kinds of stuff in this house. Okay, so it's definitely got the nickel trim, really tall doors. You know that because other videos I talk about the four hinges. 
So let's go ahead and go into the primary bedroom, which is right off of the garage. So if you come around here and you take a look at this, I like this house a lot. I already can tell this is my, one of my favorites so far. It's got again, the same slate color, sandstone color tile, 12 by 24. It's got a mud bench as well as an upper bench. I mean, not bench, but uh, storage. This is the garage right here. So this is only a two car, but they've set this up to where you can get access to the side of your yard from that door there. That would be considered an upgrade. So if you're washing your car or you're doing something on the side of the house, you can come out here and so you have access to it from the garage. Okay, let's go back in. Hey, if you guys are getting some value out of this video, go ahead and pause the video and write down my email address and that phone number down there. My team and I, we'd love to help you make a smooth transition to Colorado Springs. Book a Zoom session with a team member or myself and actually break down the hot spots, where to live, where to avoid. We can customize a strategy directly for you. So look forward to helping you in the future. Now back to the video. This is not a three or four car garage. This is just a two car standard garage. Okay, we've got the primary bedroom right here with nice verticality. Definitely has a peak at the top, a gable at the top of this ceiling. And you have your own private entryway out to your backyard and back deck covered porch, right? So if you're doing maybe some uh, moonlighting or you know, you're outside with some wine, you put the kids to bed, you can literally come out here after the house is nice and calm and sit on your back deck and just take it all in. Look at that. Have a couple of Adira Adirondack, is that how you say it? Adirondack chairs right here and just watch the grass grow. You've already, you've already done all the work. You've already arrived. So now it's time to just sit back and <laughs> relax. That's what I do. When I go home, all I go, when I go home, I just sit in a chair and look and look out and look at stuff. I don't talk anymore. I'm done talking. All I do is just literally take it all in because that's what it's all about. Look how nice and clean this is. Check this out. Look at that shot right here. Look at the verticality of this. I'm telling you, ranchers are no lie. Like ranchers are nice. 12 by 24. Okay. Dual sinks, his and hers. We've got mowing. I know mowing, this is what I have in my bathroom. Not this particular style, but this brand I really like. I think mowing's a good brand. You've got these really tall doors. Four hinges, one, two, three, four. Most doors are three hinges. This, these are four. So you got this extra verticality. Check this out. Nice big walk-in closet. And very uniform. Put your, your pocket squares, your ties, your um, whatever you want to put right there. Plus you also have a nice um, shower right here. Can you see that? Let's swing this open. Actually, yeah, probably coming in through there. Get that. Boom. Look at that. And that tile, I really dig that tile. I really, really dig this particular tile. Um, this 12 by 24 is really sharp. It's a solid. And they started putting these holes in these, um, this little soap dish because have you guys ever had the soap dish where you put your soap there and then all of a sudden it's just like all this like nastiness and you're in the shower. So I guess it's okay. But now it just, it empties itself automatically. I think that was kind of a cool thing that they did 12 by 24 tile, nice river, river rock. Um, floor. So this is definitely a five piece frosted glass is already there. You don't have to put any film or anything on that. The privacy is already built in. Okay. Now 
This is the sharp house. Look at this and then just take this all in. Just pan from right to left and ca just capture all of this. You don't have to move. You can just literally pan. There you go. It's a sweeping pan. Okay. Let's come downstairs. Okay. Right here you have a coat closet. So as you enter that your home or your guests enter the home, I should say, you're greeting them, come on in. They're looking at, they're capturing all of this. And then, you know, you had them take their coats off, stay a while. You got plenty of space for bars, uh, bar stools. If you come around here, look, you got four bar stools right here. You could do another two or three. You can just load this thing up with bar stools. You have so much seating if you wanted to do that. You know what you could also do? Like for birthdays, parties, Anything where you're having people over because you have a house like this where it's verticality and you're like wanting to show this house off, all your, ki your kids' friends or your friends or whoever could all be like just sitting right here on this. You don't even have to worry about furniture. Th this could seat so many just with that bar. Um, I just think that's really cool, the way that it's shaped too. It's a big, huge floating island, but there's plenty of, you could have like your cakes, your serving trays, your, um, all your gifts, like if it was a birthday party, you could have all the like wrapped presents like just stacked right here. And just this house is like perfect for entertaining. It's super open concept, vertical space. You're not bumping in anything. It's, it's just got a lot of space to it, usable space. I like this house. A farm print. This is a traditional rancher. This is why ranchers are so popular. Let's go ahead and go downstairs. Now remember I told you that um, you can go downstairs in the in uh, most homes in Colorado. Well, this is the same thing. Come downstairs. This is a finished basement. Watch your head right here. Okay. And you can just kind of hang tight. Look at this, man. This is a nice setup. This is big. Plus, it has tall ceilings. I have to jump to touch this ceiling. Look at the space of this downstairs basement. I'm telling you, this is now this is a nice one. What I would do if it was me, oh man, there's almost unlimited potential with how to design this basement. I mean, I would keep this maybe fairly open since it's the entryway, but I would have this as like a seating area, maybe float some couches, float a sec, or you put a section maybe against there. But f here's what I would do. I just see my, remember that one thing is like a, THK or TDK or whatever, where that dude is like sitting in that chair and his like hair is being blown back and he's watching like a TV. I would have this as like my centerpiece. This just tells me that you have to do something special right here. Maybe even put a projector, projector. maybe even have your, hold on, stay right there. Maybe have your couch right here, in set in here, and then have your projector show, like displaying on this wall right here. This is a tall enough ceiling, wide enough space, where you could have this entire thing be like a theater. Or you could have your chair, your, your sofa this way. And I would have, I would literally just have the sofa right here and have an 80 inch TV, whatever they are now. I think last time I checked the mine's like a 75 or something, but I mean, you could even go bigger than that. You could, this, you don't need more than that. Like, right, this is perfect, okay? It's got all kinds of outlets, one, two, three outlets for there. Or you could have one of those big, huge um, uh, bookshelves and have the TV mounted inside of there. So I think that's really a nice touch the way they did this. Now, if you wanna come over here and then kind of pan back and show that direction right there. We are totally immersed in the ground. So this is immersed basement. And I'm speaking like almost like as if the basement's like this thing from a different planet or whatever. <laughs> like it's not that unique. I hope everyone knows that there's basements and they're underground, but some people haven't. They're just, this is the first time they're seeing them. So we, again, we've got the corrugated metal window wells, one, two, three, but I like how those let in a lot of flood, a lot of natural light in here. So let's go into this area right in here and see what this is about. Okay. So, okay. We got the unfinished area. We'll get to that. Let's go with bedroom number one down here. So we know we have a bedroom on the main level, which is the primary. This is bedroom number two. Okay.
We've got a nice size bathroom right here. Capture the tile, uh, yeah, the flooring, the tile goes all the way to the ceiling. Okay, so that all matches, that's uniform. You've got bedroom number two down in the basement here. Another good sized room. And again, the verticality, the tall ceilings are what, what catches my eye on this and the recessed lighting. Okay. And then you've got just your mechanical room. This is the unfinished space. So this is a good place to put like, you know, all your Red Bull drinks, you stack them all right here, put your waters. If you needed extra space, you can put them in a mechanical room. Um, Ream is a good, a good brand for the water heater. You have Lennox for the um, furnace. You've got, uh, I don't see a whole house humidifier in here, but that's a bolt on. And then let's see right here. This is the storage area, I think. Oh, wow, okay. So this is just like a long corridor with just like this, uns okay, yeah, check this out. So here we go. All right. You could put a gym down here. This, especially with these ceilings. Like you guys are like these big, huge squat racks. I would put one of those squat racks right here. Actually, maybe against this wall here. Um, you've got enough verticality where you could do all your, your burpees, your pull-ups, your um, calf raises, your box squats, with all that workout stuff. You could do all that down here in this, this space right here. Just don't bump this right here. I would do something, maybe put a cage around this or do something. This is a little making me a little nervous having this right here. This is a sump pump. It's six feet below uh, ground. It's a trench that's the lowest point of the foundation. And basically this is designed to where if there's ever a run on your um, uh, outside water, if there's any water intrusion, if there's any issues, this is designed to protect your house from flooding. So if there's ever any water gets caught in here, it'll actually trigger a, um, a motor, a buoy will kick on, it'll float up, and then it'll literally kick the water out. That's why it's plugged in, it has a motor to it and then it'll pump the water out of the house, which is right there. Expel the water and then it'll, the system will re reset itself. But I like this, man. You could have this as one big wine cellar, especially the way that that door is. Just hang tight right there, yeah. See, see how that's a corridor? I would, you could finish this out, but I like it unfinished like this. Cause it's almost like, you just hang out. It's almost like you're, you're entering into the private reserve. See, I'm walking through where all the wine is. <laughs> I'm not a wine drinker. I keep saying that. I'm more of a coffee guy myself, but I just see it as like, if you're a wine person, man, you could have all kinds of bottles and bottles, and this could just be like a wine cellar or have stacks and stacks, pallets of Red Bulls, and, and just be like, come to my private reserve room where I have all my Red Bulls at, and my gym. Those are the two things. That's what I would have. You have a fireplace, double ovens, additional drink space, undermount lighting, gas range, flush refrigerator, granite, undermount sink, verticality. You have two access points to your backyard, one from your primary bedroom and the other from the dining living area. I just see like this is like a perfect home to have like a birthday party because you know you have all the presents on the counters. Then you have like you know all the kiddos over celebrating your kid's birthday or what have you and then they come out to the backyard area. It's all fenced, nice grass, everything's protected well insulated. This is a cool home. This one is available right now, but if you actually like this house, then let me know. I'm in these houses constantly. I know what, what's per contract, how to read a builder contract, which is another thing. Builders, these contracts, they're not designed to protect you. They're designed to protect CYA, the builder. They're designed to cover the builder's butt, not yours. So if there's ever any lawsuits or legalities or issues, guess what? That contract that you signed, it's not designed to protect you, it's designed to protect the builder. If you have an intermediary, a professional realtor representing you, I can look over all those contracts and make sure that you're signing in the right way and where you're supposed to be to make sure you're covered. We can also write in contingencies. These things need to happen. 
in this timetable at this price point to cover you as well, especially if the builder owes you anything like landscaping, like fencing, like to have certain finishes. Sometimes I've seen builders will put in like a countertop that's not even like quartz or granite. They just put in like a Formica countertop. You're like, wait a minute, hold on. Let's go to the contract. This is supposed to be quartz or granite. And it's just one of those things where even plain as day things, the builder will just kind of do what they want. So for the most part, builders will build a good home, but there's always little details that you can always make sure are, um, uh, are looked after and, and covered and make sure that you cover your, your bat, your six o'clock. So with that being said, I look forward to seeing you. I'll talk to you guys on the next one. Mark Davis out. Is this has a lot of wrought iron stairway. This has a lot of wrought iron, that haptic, that tactile, you know, when you click on your iPhone, it has that haptic famous painting or something like a Mozart or something. You could mount it right there. <laughs> what? Go Mozart. If you had a Van Gogh, you could put the Van Gogh right there.